Guys, bring this up, man. Like, I don't know if you know what you just did. Okay, you ripped the victory out of the jaws of defeat, man. And just pull that Okay, this is on you. Okay, you guys go out there and you do everything that we ask you to do. You play with effort, you play with finish, okay, and you play with violence. I appreciate every one of you. Okay, congratulations to you. When we win, it's because you guys went out there and won the game. That's complimentary football, baby. That's how you finish out a game right there. So proud of everybody here. Let's get back in tomorrow. Football. Get the ready for Houston. Let's go. Family on three. One, two, three. From the Bet MGM studio, we welcome you to the Mike Vrabel Show. I'm Mike Keith. It's a short week as we come back from Monday Night Football. So sitting in for the head coach tonight is Titans Radio's head coach, Dave McGinnis. Coach Mack, have you recovered from last night? No. <laughs> have not and don't want to for just a little while. I, mean, I gave myself a little more than 48 hours for that one. Uh, fabulous, fabulous feeling. That game was like nothing we have ever seen. Really like nothing the NFL has ever seen. No team has been down 14 in the final three minutes and then won in regulation. It was incredibly odd. It was a 13-13 game with just over six minutes to go. The Titans are going to get the ball back. A fumbled punt allows the Miami Dolphins to score a touchdown in two plays in just seven yards. And then a fumbled pitch... It allows Miami to score two plays, 12 yards, and suddenly 434 remains in the game. The Titans are behind 27 to 13 after playing so hard for so long, they've given away the chance to win this game. I just told you I hadn't recovered. You just, I just relived it again. What a marvelous breakdown on it. And, and the Titans did everything they wanted to do early on in that ball game. I mean, they, they drug them through the mud. They pulled them into the phone booth, and they were trading punches with them. And then they let them out. They let them out, and then they regrouped and brought it back in. All right, so the Titans get the ball with 434 remaining, trailing by 14 points. Let's take a look at the Mike Vrabel six-pack presented by SeatGeek. Here's a big play on second and 15 with 308 remaining. The Titans find a way to come back as Will Levis goes to Tajay Spears. See it, coach? Well, this is very well set up. It's a, it, it's a screen very well set up, but what happens was you're getting, you're, you're getting a lot of pressure, but the timing of this has to be just about right. He layers the ball over the top of everybody, and then Ty J. Spears is electric with the ball in his hand. Just get the ball to him, let him get out in the open field. So the Titans get to the 34-yard line. Two plays later, they have second and two at the 26. Nick Westbrook-Akine, who had two catches for 28 yards, has a catch for 23. And, and, and again, this is a very well-conceived, layered route. And the thing that's going on here with this throw is as the throw, look, look, at the, look at the space. He's got two underneath, one over the top. He layers it right on top of it with great touch. I mean, Will Levis, we're watching him grow before our eyes. This is a touch pass that was a big, big throw. Okay, so what you've seen, you've seen two good completions, and both times the receivers get out of bounds. So the Titans aren't using much clock. 246 remaining when they have first and goal at the three. And how about Levis to the living legend? This to me is, 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 is this is a little bit of, a, of an off look pass. This is a, a look away pass. And DeAndre Hopkins knows exactly how to manipulate. You get zone coverage, watch the quarterback. He, he manipulates the pocket, but his eyes are downfield. And then D Hop, if you play zone defense against D Hop, he's going to be open. You said he's seen everything, he knows what to do. Well, we saw something there we've not seen before, and that was the two-point play. 
No, two-point play was very well conceived. It, it was play action. And again, you know, when, as a defense, when you're back, your heels are on the goal line and you're playing somebody that's got a run-pass combination for a two-point play, it's really hard to cover that. That thing was so wide open. It was so wide open, it was scary because you're always afraid you'll pull the string on it. They didn't. The Titans choose to go for two down 27 to 19 because analytics say that you have a better chance to convert that one and to win the game. And so they played the math, they get it to 27 to 21, and then Miami is unable to move the ball when they get it back. And here go the Titans down by six, Levis to Chig Akakwo. Yeah, and Chig does a really nice job here of taking one step. They set up there. Look at the blocks out in front of him. And Chig takes a st one step, and then he doesn't hesitate. He takes off, but the blocks out in front of him by the linemen and the, re and the receivers is really, really good, Mike. But Chig steps back and then immediately goes vertical. The Titans will end up scoring in just 51 seconds, and it's going to be Derrick Henry. And Derrick Henry didn't have a big night. But the veteran knows how to find the end zone at the big moment. Yeah, so as soon as they hand it off to the king here, you see everybody collapse down inside. He sticks his right foot in the ground, a great cut. You're not going to deny him the end zone when this type of thing happens. This is great vision. He made one cut. They were stacked up inside. Touchdown for the king. Derrick Henry has rushed for two touchdowns in each of the last three games. The extra point by Nick Folk is good after this Henry touchdown. 28 to 27, a minute 49 to go. And I said to Coach Mack in the radio booth. Yes, you did. <laughs> did they score too fast? How many of you at home who were still watching thought to yourself, did they score too fast? Now, you wouldn't say last night because you didn't want to jinx anybody. How afraid were you that the Titans had scored too fast? Never been afraid <laughs> in a football game. But you, you had a point because you've got an explosive offense out there. But the way the Titans have been putting a dome over what was happening with their passing game, I sure wasn't afraid. And I was a little concerned, but not overly. I'm the same way because I liked where go. the defense was at this point. <laughs> they had been getting after Tua Tungavailoa all night long. Here's how they end it. Harold Landry with a tremendous pass rush. He finishes with three sacks, and he finishes the job. Well, first of all, look at the coverage downfield. It's very, very good. And then, then it's a game. They collapse the cylinder. Tua stumbles because he has nowhere to throw it. And then Harold Landry cleans him up. And I had just about jumped out of the booth on this one. Titans had five sacks overall. Arden Key had a sack. Jaleel Johnson had a sack and a forced fumble. And Harold Landry with three sacks. And that now gives him eight and a half on the year. He trails Danico Autry by just a half sack. Very possible the Titans are going to end up with two guys with double digit sacks this year in a guy like Landry, who's coming back from ACL surgery, and a guy like Danico Autry, who blocked a kick again last night and just doesn't seem to get any older, miraculously. Well, and, and he's, he's just, a, he's just a, a gamer. This guy's a, a true professional in every sense of the word. I'm so happy that he came here, and I'm also so happy that he's an integral part of what we're doing. So much talk about Will Levis today and the way he played. First 300-yard passing game ever for a rookie on Monday Night Football. Epic comeback win. But he has help, particularly in the person of DeAndre Hopkins. When we come back... The Vrabel Strader will be where Coach Dave McGinnis will show us why DeAndre Hopkins is so special and why Will Levis has so much confidence in him. Stay tuned for more of the Mike Vrabel Show. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek from right here in the Bet MGM studio. Coach Mike Vrabel likes Dave McGinnis so much, he lets him host his show when he's not able to be here. He also lets him use the Vrabel Strader. There well we done. go. Okay, so what we're looking at here, late first half, game tied at seven, and you're looking at Will Levis to DeAndre Hopkins. Show us how this is going to work. I can't wait to do this. Okay. I really can't. All right, first of all, we're going to go here with the free hand. Right here is our focus right now to begin looking. That's, that's, that's Howard up here on top of DeAndre Hopkins. D-Hop now is in a press situation. And by press situation, I'm talking about, see, see how close the, the corner is? The corner's in a press. He's not in a bail. He's not going to move. He's in a press situation. So what's going to happen here? 
Will Levis is looking out there and say, I got D-Hop in press. That's where I'm going. Now, as Mike starts this thing, I'm going to ask him to stop it at a certain point because he's good at this. Stop it, Mike. Right now, Howard is in perfect, perfect phase. In phase means he's right up against the hip of the receiver. He couldn't be in better phase. He's, they're running right along, uh, right along a line. He's doing a great job of staying with him. But this doesn't matter. When you get D-hop, you get D-hop in this type of situation. I always like to circle again. You like to circle. Okay, you got, you got D-hop in that situation. Ball's going to him. Because even if he's covered, throw it to him. Because the guy is going to make a play on the ball. Let's go, Mike. Watch this. It gets, it, gets, it gets down the field. Look at where it, stop it. Back it up just a little bit. Back it up, please. Stop now. Keep going. Stop it. Don't take your hand off of there. Well, we've got to show the other look before we go to break. Okay, well. Let's show from the end zone so people can really see how amazing this <laughs> catch is. Now boss me around like you like to. I love to. Okay, okay go. Now, stop it a minute. Just stop it again, right. please. Here's what I want to see. Here's what I want to see. What back do you want this, to see? Back this up. Back it I want, up. I want to see right here, number 32. Number 32, that's Ty J. Spears. I want to see of the Ty Titans. J. Spears right here. This pass protection is good, but watch Ty J. Spears. He's not only good with the ball in his hand, this guy is a complete football player. Watch him chip the edge to build a, to build a little more time for this throw. He's going to give Van Ginkle the business. Let's follow it all the way through before we have to go to break. Good go, block. go, go. One-handed catch, one-handed catch, D-hop, perfect, understands, nuanced receiver. This is a Hall of Fame receiver. When he's one-on-one, -on -one, throw it to him. That's what happens, Mike, when they throw it to Hop. Seven for 124 last night. Great job by DeAndre Hopkins and the Titans as they win. I've been asking the questions. When we come back, a kid will ask Coach Mack a question. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek from here in the Bet MGM studio. Good job, Coach. Thanks, Mike Keith. SeatGeek sponsors the Mike Vrabel Show from right here in the Bet MGM studio. We're glad to have you with us. And time now for Kids Ask Coach Mac. I think this is Alaka, isn't it? Let's see if I, I am so excited. Hello, Patrick. My name is Alaka, and I'm eight years old. My question is, when you're watching the tape, how do you know if it's man-to-man -man defense or zone defense? Well, that's a good question. How do you know when you watch a tape if it's man-to-man -man defense or zone defense? Oh, Alika, what a great, great, you've clearly been watching football with members of your family that understand football. What a great, great question. Here's the best way, look at the safeties. If there's a single safety in the middle of the field, most of the time those corners are gonna be in man-to-man. -man. If it's a split safety with safeties like this lined up deep, then it's gonna be a zone defense. So the first thing that you look at from a first glimpse from 30,000 feet is look and see where the safety is. If he's in the middle of the field, it's normally going to be man to man. If they're split, it's zone. How long did it take you to learn all of that? Probably longer than it's going to take Alika to learn it because okay. I'm not as smart as she is. And I know I've, I've met her. She's but very, I mean, very learning smart. all the coverages, all the blitzes, everything that went into calling defense. How long did it take you to learn? I'm all still of learning. You, really? Every year. Absolutely every year. And I talk to coaches every year to keep up with what's going on. You never quit learning about this game. It's a simple game but it's very detailed. So the truth is, I never quit learning about it. Even though you've been doing this, you've been around the game for over 50 years, dating back to your time as a player. Something is always new. Something always comes up as a way that, you know, it, it's a yin and a yang between an offense and a defense. The offense will come up with something, defense will come up with something to counteract it. I love learning all that stuff in the off season. Well, I just learned something very interesting. When we come back, time for the Epic Western Spotlight. That's next, as you're on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek. From the Bet MGM studio, stay with us for more. Frank Wycheck is one of the 10 most important people in the first 25 years of the Tennessee Titans, and not just for the reasons that you may think. Before the team had ever played a snap in this state in 1997, Frank became the organization's number one go-to guy in the Nashville community. He spoke at banquets, appeared at ticketing events, and did every single media appearance possible. It was too much to ask of one player, but Frank Wycheck did it, and he did it all. Frank's efforts to give a face and a personality 
to the Tennessee Oilers were unmatched and vitally important. That off-the-field work laid the foundation for the amazing response to Frank's spectacular on-field play. 60-plus catches and 600-plus yards receiving in five straight seasons. Three Pro Bowls. Clutch play after clutch play. And of course, that throw on the Music City Miracle. Five, yeah, give pitches it, it back to Wycheck. He throws it across the field to Dyson. He's got something. Frank's remarkable athleticism allowed him to run right, leap into the air, and accurately throw a pass to his left over 30 yards. Just crazy. That backwards pass made him forever famous in NFL lore, and Frank liked that. It would give him the chance to remind you that he had a perfect 158.3 career passer rating. Frank played with a chip on his shoulder. After being cut by Washington in 1995, he feared being cut every season. That fear always fueled him. So did his Philadelphia roots. Don't get better than this. Perfect day, on our family and friends. Should have put it all together with a win today. It's all that counts, baby. And you heard those roots when he moved to a career in radio because you never had to ask Frank Wycheck for his opinion ever. If something bothered Frank, he was happy to tell you about it. And his takes were of the shoot first, ask questions later variety. That's why his morning show on 104.5 The Zone in Nashville was so much fun to listen to. This was Frankie. This was also the guy that you got for 12 years on Titans Radio. As his late broadcast partner Mark Howard used to say, if I said what Frankie said, I'd be fired. But because it's Frankie, no one cares. And Mark was right, because Frank was so much fun. Frank Wycheck's very best quality can only be described as a very special sweetness. He loved very deeply his daughters, his family, and a close circle of friends that came from many places in his life. But that sweetness also came out when he would encounter, to borrow images from the Gospel of Matthew, the least, the last, and the lost. Frank Wycheck gave of himself fully in these moments and created lasting memories for people who needed them the most. If you had the pleasure to witness one, you were blessed to see Frank Wycheck's sweetness. When we lost Frank this past weekend, our first thoughts went to his family, especially the ones that we came to know best, his daughters and his brother Teddy. And in this heartbreaking moment, we hope that they will remember how many people loved Frank Wycheck. For whatever role that he played in their lives, even if they didn't know him personally, Think about the hundreds of thousands of people that loved him. I hope that Frank Wycheck knew that too. I'm certain that he knows that now. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek continues from the Bet MGM studio. Tim, now for our Nissan Keys to Success. Dave McGinnis, key number one. Hey, build on the momentum from Monday night's big victory. Well, that absolutely is what you have to do with a very young football team. They were put in a situation where they had to overcome not only the opponent, they had to overcome themselves. And they did that. You can build on that as, as a head coach. Those are things that resonate, resonate very, very deeply. And you've got to build on that, Mike. The Titans took a lot of the things that they did well in the lost Indianapolis and built on them in that game as well. Well, that, that, that's, that's extremely important to do. I mean, it, it's a learning experience. The, the National Football League is a weekly learning experience, but when you are able to take the things that you've worked on and the things that you emphasize during the week and then make those come to life in a football game of that magnitude, that's a huge growth for your team. Key number two, eliminate unforced errors. Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, you, you have to eliminate unforced errors because the Titans, really the situation they put themselves in at the end of the game, they put themselves in those, that situation. So you've got to be able, you've got to be able to take those out. Take, it's hard enough playing the opponent, and it's, it, it, it doubles it when you're playing yourself and you're playing your own errors. So you've got to take those 
out of the game, and those are things that you as a player individually can control. In the end, the Titans won the ball game in Miami because they played complimentary football. Every unit contributed. Need that again against Houston on Sunday. Well, complimentary football, I think, gets misconstrued sometimes, and people think, you know, that, that, that you have to, you know, do exactly what your offense is doing as a defense or do exactly what you're spending. It, it's you've got to help one another. You've got to help one another, and at times you're going to have to pick one another up. That's what complimentary football is. We saw that throughout this game. Each unit picked each other up. Good job, Coach. Thank you, Mike. Nice fill-in for, for the head coach tonight. Look forward to having you with us on Sunday. Titans and the Texans Nissan Stadium kickoff set for 12.02. We're on the air on Titans Radio with this guy right here at 11 a.m. Central on 104.5 The Zone at our great Titans Radio stations. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.